Al Jannah, Paradise, in the Light of the Quran and Sunnah Part 3. The Highest and Lowest Positions in Paradise. Muslim reports from Al Mugira ibn Shiba that the Messenger of Alayah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said. Musa asked his rab, who will have the lowest position in paradise? Alayah said, a man who will come after the people of paradise have entered paradise. He will be told, enter paradise, and he will say, O oh my rab, how? The people have already taken their places. He will be asked, will you not be content if you could have the equivalent of a kingdom on earth? He will say, yes, my rab. So he will be told, you will have that and as much again, and as much again, and as much again, and as much again. On the fifth time, he will say, I am content with that, my rab. He will be told, you will have all that and ten times more, you will have whatever your heart desires and whatever will delight your eyes. The man will say, I am content with that. Musa asked, my rab, who will have the highest status in paradise? Alaya said, they are those whom I choose. I establish their honor with my own hand and then set a seal over it, and they will be blessed with bounties which no eye has seen. No ear has heard and no human mind can comprehend. This confirmed by the words of Alaya, may he be glorified and exalted. No person knows what is kept hidden for them of joy as a reward for what they used to do. 3217. The Highest Position in Paradise The highest position in paradise which will be attained by only one person is called al Waysila. It will be attained, in Sahya, by the chosen Prophet, the best of Alayah's creation, our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. This is narrated in a hadith narrated by al-Bukhari from Hapar ibn Abdullah according to which the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, whoever says. When he hears the call to prayer, Alayah Hamarabah had he dawadi tama, was salat al ka'ama, adi Muhammad an al silata wal fadi lada, wa bathu makam an mamud an aladi wa dahu. O Alayah, Lord of this perfect call and the prayer to be offered. Grant Muhammad al Waysila, the highest position in paradise, and also the eminence and resurrect him to the praised position you have promised. Intercession for him will be granted on the day of resurrection. Muslim reported that Abdullah ibn Amr al As said, I heard the messenger of Alayah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, say, when you hear the Mu'adin call, say what he says. Then send blessings on me, for whoever sends blessings on me, Alayah will return it to him tenfold. Then ask Alayah to grant me al Waysila, for whoever asks Alayah to grant me al Waysila intercession will be granted for him. The Sahaba asked the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, what is al Waysila? He said, it is the highest level of paradise, which only one man will reach. And I hope that I will be the one. Ahmad from Abu Huraira, the messenger of Alayah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him said, Al-Waysila is a rank above which there is no other in the sight of Alayah. Ask Alayah to grant me Al-Waysila, Ahmad from Abu Sa'id, Siya bin Kathir, and Nayaya, 2332. Those who take their positions in the highest levels. Among those who will occupy the highest levels in paradise are the Shuada, the best of whom are those who fight in the front ranks and never turn away until they are killed. Ahmad and At-Tabarani report with a Sahih Isnid from Na'im ibn Humar, 1, that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said. The best of the Shuada are those who fight in the first rank, and do not turn their face away until they are killed. They will have the pleasure of occupying the highest dwellings in paradise. Your rab will smile at them, and whenever your rab smiles upon any of his slaves, that person will not be brought to account. Musnad Ahmad, Kitab Azud, Bab al Aizan Il al Armala wal Masikin wal Yatim 2 2286, Hadith No. 2982. Footnotes. 1. Ibn Hajar said, in Takrid al Tatheb, not Im ibn Hamr or Hiba er or Kama er. He was a Sahabi and the majority of sources give his father's name is Haimar. The one who helps widows and the destitute will have the status of a Mujahid in paradise. Muslim reports from Abu Huraira that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said. The one who helps widows and the destitute is like one who fights in jihad for the sake of Alayah. I, the narrator, think he said. And he is like the one who stands all night in prayer and never sleeps, and like the one who fasts continually and never breaks his fast. Sahih Muslim, Kitab Azud, Bab al Aizan, Ila al Armala wal Miskin wal Yatim, 2 2286, No. 2982. The one who sponsors an orphan will be close to the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, in paradise. 
Muslim reports from Abu Huraira that the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, the one who sponsors an orphan, whether from his own wealth or from the orphan's wealth. I and he will be like these two in paradise, and Malik, the narrator, gestured with his forefinger and middle finger. Sahih Muslim, Kitab Azud, 2 2286, No. 2982, Lahu al Ghairihi, whether from his own wealth or from the orphan's wealth, means whether he supports him from his own wealth or is a legal guardian over the orphan and the orphan's wealth. Alaya will raise the status of parents by the blessing of their children's due a.a. Ahmad reports from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Alaya, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Alaya will raise the status of his righteous slave in paradise, and he will say, O oh my Rab, how could I deserve this? He will say, because your child sought forgiveness for you. Ibn Kathir said, this is a sahih isn't it although none of the authors of the six books reported it. But there is a corroborating report in Sahih Muslim from Abu Huraira, according to which the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said. When a son of Adam dies his good works come to an end, except for three. Sadaka Jiraya, ongoing charity, beneficial knowledge, that he discovered or propagated, and a righteous son who will pray for him. Ibn Kathir, and Nayaya, 2-340. The Soil of Paradise. Al-Bukhari and Muslim reported the Hadith of Al-Muraj from Anas ibn Malik from Abu Dar in which Abu Dar said, the Messenger of Alaya, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said. I entered paradise where I saw lights of pear land its soil was musk. Muslim and Ahmad report from Abu Sa'i that Ibn Sayyad asked the Messenger peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, about the soil of paradise. He said, it is a fine white powder of pure musk. Ahmad reports from Hopper ibn Abdullah that the Messenger of Alaya, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, concerning the Jews. I am going to ask them about the soil of paradise, which is a fine white powder. So he asked them, and they said, it is like a loaf of bread, O Abul Qa'asim. The Messenger of Alaya, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, bread is like pearls. And Nayaya, 2-242. Ahmad at Tirmidhi and ad darimi reported that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, I asked O Messenger of Alaya peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. From what are people made? He said, from water. We asked, from what is paradise built? He said, bricks of gold and silver and mortar of fragrant musk. Its pebbles are pearls and rubies, and its soil is saffron. Whoever enters it is blessed with joy and will never be miserable, he will remain there forever and never die. His clothes will never wear out, and his youth will never fade away. Mishkat al Masabe A, 389, No. 5630. The Rivers of Paradise. Alaya, may he be blessed and exalted, has told us that rivers flow from beneath paradise. And give glad tidings to those who believe and do righteous good deeds, that for them will be gardens under which rivers flow. 225. For them will be gardens of eternity, beneath them rivers will flow, 1831. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, told us clearly about the rivers of paradise. He said that during his Israel, night journey, I saw four rivers flowing out from beneath Sidrat al Munta'a, two visible and two hidden. He asked, O Jibreel, what are these rivers? He said, the two hidden rivers are rivers of paradise, and the two visible rivers are the Nile and the Euphrates. Muslim, Kitab al-Iman, Bab al-Isriya, 1 150, no. 164, al-Bukhari reports the same from Anas ibn Malik, Hami al-Usul, 10 507, narrated B.T. Abu. Awana, al-Ismaili and At-Tabarani in Asagir. Muslim reports from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Alaya, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Siron, Jiran, the Euphrates and the Nile are all from the rivers of paradise. Sahih Muslim, Kitab al Jana, Bab Mafi Dunya Amin and Har al Jana, for 2183, no. 2839, Al Albani attributed it, in Sil Silat al Hadith as Sahih 1 6, to Muslim, Ahmad, al Ajirai, and al Hatib. Sheikh Nasiruddin al Albani said, Perhaps what is meant is that these rivers originated in paradise, Yustas mankind did. This hadith does not contradict the well established fact that these rivers spring forth from known sources on earth. If this is not in fact the meaning of this hadith, then it is one of the matters of al Ghaib, the unseen, which we must believe and accept because the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, has told us about it. Silsilat al Hadith as Sahiha, 118. Al Qari said, These four rivers are considered to be among the rivers of paradise because they are so fresh and beneficial, and contain blessings from Alaya.
and were honored by the fact that the prophets came to them and drank from them. Reported by Al Albani in his footnotes on Mishkat al Masabe A. 380. Another of the rivers of paradise is Al Kauthar, which Leah has given to his messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Verily we have granted you, O Muhammad, Al Kauthar, a river in paradise, 108 to 1. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, saw it and told us about it. Al Bukhari reported from Anas ibn Malik that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Whilst I was walking in paradise I saw a river whose banks were domes of hollow pearls, and I asked, What is this, O Jabril? He said, This is Al Kauthar which your Rab has given to you. And its scent, or its mud, was the fragrant musk. Hudba, one of the narrators, was not sure if he said tub, scent, or teen, mud. Sahih al Bukhari, Kitab ar Rikwa ak, Bab Filhad, Fath al Bari, 11 464. Ibn Abbas explained, Al Kathar means the abundant blessings which Alayah has bestowed upon his messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Then Abu Bishr said to Seed ibn Haber. Who reported this comment from Ibn Abbas, there are people who claim that it is a river in paradise. Sa'id said, the river in paradise is one of the blessings that Alayah has bestowed upon him. Sahih al Bukhari, Kitab ar Rikwa ak, Bab Filhad, Fath al Bari, 11463. Al Hafi ibn Kathir compiled a number of hadith, and Nayaya, 2 246, in which the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, spoke about Al Kathar. Such as the report narrated by Muslim from Anas, which states that when the Ayah verily we have granted you Al Kathar, 108, was revealed. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Do you know what Al Kathar is? They said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, It is a river that Alaya has promised me and in it is much goodness. He also quoted the hadith narrated by Ahmad from Anas, according to which the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, I have been given Al Kathar, which is a river flowing across the face of the earth, its banks are domes of pearl and it is not covered. I touched its mud with my hand, and found that it was fragrant musk and its bubbles were pearls. Also narrated by Ahmad from Anas, the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, It is a river that Alaya has given to me in paradise. Its mud is musk and its water is whiter than milk, and sweeter than honey. Birds with necks like the necks of camels drink from it. The rivers of paradise do not just contain water. There are rivers of water, of milk, of wine and of clear honey. Alaya says, the description of paradise which the Mudakun have been promised is that in it are rivers of water the taste and smell of which are not changed, rivers of milk of which the taste never changes, rivers of wine delicious to those who drink, and rivers of clarified honey, clear and pure. 47.15. At Tirmid he reports, with a sahi isnit, from Hakim ibn Muawiyah that the messenger of Alaya, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him said, in paradise there is a sea of honey, a sea of wine. A sea of milk and a sea of water, and the rivers flow out of these seas. Hami al Uesul, 10 508. He also told us of a river called Barak, which flows by the gate of paradise. During the period of Al Barzakh, the time between death and the day of judgment, the Shu'ada are beside this river. Ibn Abbas narrated that the messenger of Alaya, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, The Shu'ada, martyrs, are in a green dome beside the river of Barak, near the gate of paradise, from which provision comes to them morning and evening. Sahih al Hamiyas Sagir, 3 235, no. 3636, The Springs of Paradise. In Paradise, there are many springs that provide drinks of different tastes. Truly, al Madakun, the pious and righteous, will be amidst gardens and water springs, 1545. Verily, al Madakun shall be amidst shades and springs, 7741. Concerning the two gardens which Alaya has prepared for those who fear their Rab, Alaya said, In them, both, will be two springs flowing, free, 5550. And concerning the two gardens beneath them, he said, in them, both, will be two springs gushing. Fourth water, 5566. In paradise there are two springs from which al Makarabun will drink pure and undiluted, whilst the Abrar will drink their water mixed with something else. The first is the spring of Kafur, as Alaya says. Verily the Abrar, the pious, those who fear Leah and avoid evil, shall drink a cup of wine mixed with water from a spring in paradise called Kafur, a spring wherefrom the slaves of Alaya will drink, causing it to gush forth abundantly. 76-5-6. to 
he tells us that the pious will drink from it mixed with something else, whilst those close to Alea will drink it pure and undiluted. The second spring is of Tazneem, as Alea says. Verily Alabrar will be in delight, paradise, on thrones, looking, at all things. You will recognize in their faces the brightness of delight. They will be given to drink pure sealed wine, the last thereof, that wine, will be the smell of musk. And for this let, all, those who strive who want to strive, i.e. hasten earnestly to the obedience of Alea. It, that wine, will be mixed with Tazneem, a spring whereof drink those nearest to Alea. 83.22-27 Another of the springs of paradise is called al Sasabil, as Alea says. And they will be given to drink there a cup, of wine, mixed with Zanjabiel, ginger, a spring. There, called Salsabil. 76.17-18 This is probably the same spring as that mentioned above, i.e. Kafur. The palaces and tents of paradise. Alea will build good and beautiful dwellings for the people of paradise. And beautiful mansions and gardens of everlasting bliss, 972. In some places in the Quran, Alea described these dwellings as garafat, chambers or dwellings. And they will reside in the high dwellings, paradise, in peace and security, 3437. The reward for the slaves of the all merciful will be. Those will be rewarded with the highest place, in paradise because of their patience. Therein they shall be met with greetings and the word of peace and respect, 2575. Alea described these Garafat. But for those who fear Alea and keep their duty to their Rab, Alea, for them are built lofty rooms, one above the other, under which rivers flow. This is, the promise of Alea, and Alea. Does not fail in, his promise, 3920. Ibn Kathir said, Alea has told us about his blessed slaves who will have rooms, or dwellings, in paradise. These will be lofty palaces, lofty rooms, one above another, story upon story, well constructed, strong and decorated. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, described these palaces to us. According to a hadith narrated by Ahmad, and Ibn Hibban from Abu Malik al-Ashari and by at tarmidhi from Ali the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said. In paradise there are dwellings whose inside can be seen from the outside, and the outside can be seen from inside. Alea has prepared them for those who feed the hungry, and speak softly and gently, fast continuously and pray at night whilst the people are asleep. Sahih al-Hami as Sagir, 2 220, no. 2119. Alea has told us that there are tents or pavilions in paradise. Huris, beautiful, fair females, restrained in pavilions, 5572. These pavilions are wondrous tents, made of pearls, each one is made from a single, hollowed-out pearl. They are 60 miles high, according to some reports they are 60 miles wide. Al-Bukhari reports from Abdullah ibn Qais that the messenger of Alaya, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, the tent is a hollowed-out pearl, 30 miles high. In each corner of it the believer will have a wife whom no one else can see. Abu Abdul Samad and Al-Harith reported from Abu Imran that the wording was 60 miles high, Sahih al-Bukhari, Kitab bid al-Halq, Bab Sifat al-Jannah, Bath al-Bari, 6318. Muslim reported from Abdullah ibn Qais that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said. The believer in paradise will have a tent made out of a single, hollowed-out pearl, 60 miles long, in which he will have, a number of, wives, whom he will visit in turn. None of whom will see the others. See also Muslim, Kitab al Jannah, Bab Fi Sifat Kya Amal Jannah, for 2182, no. 2838. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, told us about the characteristics of the palaces of some of his wives and companions. Al Bukhari and Muslim report that Abu Hurairah said, Jibreel came to the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, O Messenger of Alaya, Qadiyah is coming. Carrying a container of food. When she comes to you, convey to her greetings of peace from her rabbin from me, and give her the glad tidings of a house in paradise made of brocade, in which there is no noise or exhaustion. Mishkat al Masabe A. 3 266. Al Bukhari and Muslim report from Hopper that the Messenger of Alaya, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, I entered paradise, where I saw Arumasa, the wife of Abu Talha. And I heard footsteps and asked, Who is that? He, Jibreel, said, That is Bali. And I saw a palace with women in its courtyard. I asked, Whose is this? They said, It is for Umar ibn al Khattab. I had wanted to go in and look at it, but I remembered your jealousy, where women are concerned. Umar said, May my mother and father be sacrificed for you. O Messenger of Alaya, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, would I feel jealous from you? Mishkat al Masabe A. 3 226.
The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, has told us of the way in which the believer may acquire more than one house in paradise. Ahmad reports with a Sahih Isnid from Ibn Abbas that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Whoever builds a masjid for Alayah, even if it is as small as the nestling place scratched out by the same grouse for its eggs, Alayah will build a house for him in paradise. Sahih al Hami as Sagir, 5265, no. 6005. Ahmad, al Bukhari, Muslim, at Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah report from Uthman that the Messenger of Alayah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said whoever builds a mosque for Alayah, Alayah will build something similar for him in paradise. Sahih al Hami as Sagir, 5265, no. 6007. Muslim, Abu Dawood, Ahmad, and Nazi, and Ibn Majah report from Um Habibah that the Messenger of Alayah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Whoever prays twelve extra, supererogatory, rakas every day, Alayah will build for him a house in paradise. Sahih al Hami, 5316, no. 6234, The Light of Paradise. Al Kurtubi said, The scholars said there is no night and day in paradise, rather, they will be in eternal everlasting light. They will know when night comes because curtains or screens will be put up and doors will be closed. And they will know when day comes because the curtains or screens will be taken down and the doors will be opened. This was mentioned by Abul Faraj ibn al Jazi, al Kurtubi, at Tathira, p. 504. Ibn Kathir in his commentary on the ayah, and they will have therein their sustenance, morning and evening. Such is the paradise, which we shall give as an inheritance to those of our slave who have been al Madakun, pious and righteous. 19. 62 to 63, said, this means something approximate to the times of day and night, it does not mean that there will be a day and night there. They will know the passing of time by the changes in the light, Tafsir ibn Kathir, 4 471. On the same subject, Ibn Taymiyyah said, there is no sun and moon in paradise, and no day or night. But they will know morning and evening from the light that shines from the direction of the throne, Majmu Fatawa Sheikh al Alam, 4 312. The Fragrance of Paradise Paradise is filled with a pure and beautiful fragrance, which the believers will be able to discern from a great distance. Ahmad, and Nazi, Ibn Majah and Al-Hakim report with a Sahih Isnid that the Messenger peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said. Whoever kills a man of Al-Adjama, non-Muslims living under Islamic rule, will not smell the fragrance of paradise. Even though its fragrance can be discerned from a distance of 40 years traveling. Sahih Al-Hami as Sagir, 5235, no. 6,324 add 5,337 number 6,333.